So one of the major stories of 2022, and we're right in it, and it's building and building as I speak, is that the fixed signs are in a pincer. And this is a major, major story. I'm gonna break down maybe what this could mean or try to prepare us for the intensities that are coming here within two weeks as Mars will join Uranus and square Saturn. Part of astrology, part of what we do is prepare for transits and try to psychically and energetically align ourselves, not only with the symbols of the moment of a set of transits, but maybe the historical resonances that those transits have implied or carried with them. And so this video, the major transit I'm thinking about here is having Mars in a fixed sign, it's in Taurus now, Saturn in a fixed sign, it's currently in Aquarius, and then the lunar nodes in fixed signs, they're currently in the Taurus-Scorpio axis, the north node in Taurus, the south node in Scorpio. And what could this portend as these planets make an alignment. In the ancient system, Mars and Saturn are two of the most challenged energies that can bring some of the most chaotic or maybe difficult set of realities. We might say that their significations are ch troubling <laughs> or challenging or difficult. The so-called malefic planets, right? A lot of people don't like that label, so we don't have to use that label, but just read the lists of what they can imply. Saturn, restriction, coldness, grief, isolation, separation, loss, suffering. Mars, of course, Saturn has a has a whole nother side that's a different video but mars can when it's at its roughest violence all kinds of breakage shattering anger rage you know ripping apart tearing apart um all riots anger you know public anger and then of course the lunar nodes which when new moons or full moons happen near those nodes we have eclipses the alteration of the reality that eclipses imply both visually, but also symbolically. And so when you combine Saturn, Mars, and lunar nodes and all in one mode, that is to say the fixed signs, they are in hard aspects, squares, and oppositions with each other, and it can bring tumult. And so that's the theme of the video. I mean, look at this year in 2022, we've had a period six March to 15 April, where Mars was in Aquarius with Saturn squaring the nodes that was in the lead up to eclipse season. You might think back. I mean, one way we use astrology is to think back. When did this happen this year? How was 6 March through 15 April for you? Was there challenges? Was there intensities? Was there Saturn and martial themes? And, you know, maybe this is a good place to say, if there wasn't, wonderful. You'll have a different type of resonance with the activations that come here. But if it was, you can prepare. You can begin to be thinking about settling and preparing into um, the intensification of the moment upon Mars's entry into Taurus on 5 July. Um, and through 20 August, we have again Mars and Saturn square by sign. They'll perfect that square in mid-August. And then you have the lunar nodes there. And so it's a second resonant period. There's not another one, actually, because Mars will not re-enter fixed signs before Saturn leaves fixed signs for good in March 2023. So it's really these two pockets which are the culmination of the fixed energy in terms of these difficult symbols. Now I want to turn here to Robert Hand from his excellent treatise, Horoscope Symbols. Get a copy of this if you can. You can get an ebook fairly cheap or they're all over used bookstores. But Robert Hand, when he describes fixed signs, he says uh, the fixed signs have the function of preserving and sustaining, but the fixity is not conservatism, rather it fulfills the need for activity to be carried on daily and in a predictable and reliable manner. And that is um, what I want to focus on here is that when we have fixed signs, we're talking about the nature of our lives where we're staying with something. It's the continuity of action, behavior, and thought that fixed signs represent. Let's just go in order. Fixed Earth, that's Taurus. Maybe it's the sedentary nature of pleasure. It's staying with what feels good. It's the parts of society that are established and the echelons that are maybe structured with wealth and power. This is part of what Taurus can represent. Leo, which can embody maybe the, the ego. I know people don't like that keyword, but I think about it, it's the selfhood. It's our sense of who we are. And those identities need to be pretty stabilized. I mean, in a healthy person, you're gonna have a fixed sense of, of what one is or who one wants to be or is. And then we lead with that as we engage in reality. Then you come to fixed water, which is Scorpio, Mars rule Scorpio. This can be the deep-seated passion, the deep-seated motivations that are kind of underneath. Then you come to Aquarius, which is the societal structure, right? It's the implementation of the limits and boundaries, the laws, the restrictions, 
of pleasure, self, and passion. I think about it as just the rules of the game that we're all having to engage in collectively. So those things usually are plateaued and there's continuity. But when you have Saturn and Mars in fixed signs, squaring off and then the nodes there eclipsing those energies you get upheavals changes shifts of all kinds um, and so you can think about it as pressure on the stability and that just itself the stable things get pressurized and are targeted for change you know it implies maybe a destabilization period the reliable manner the predictable and reliable manners that hand talks about are in target for becoming unpredictable and unreliable there's breakdowns or breaks in tension and so we can look at this from all types of astrology the natal astrology, the symbol map of your natal chart and what that means for the circumstances of your life. We can also, of course, look at it from a mundane perspective. I just want to take a peek back because from both the natal and the mundane, these dates are going to be relevant. This does not happen very often where you have Saturn, Mars, and the nodes and fixed signs. So since 90... Nine. We've only had two periods prior. This was in 99 and in early 2000. You had um, Saturn in Taurus and then Mars in a few signs and the nodes were in uh, Leo Aquarius, Saturn and Taurus. So again, Saturn square the lunar nodes, 1999 into 2000. Um, and then you have the 2012 variant, late 2012 and into 2013, most of 2013. You had Saturn in Scorpio and then the North Node also with Scorpio and the South Node in Taurus. So the nodal inversion of our current moment, but with Saturn in Scorpio and of course Mars hitting signs all throughout that period. And so those larger chunks of time, what's happening in your life now, if you're old enough to remember late the 99 and into 2000 or late 2020 into 2013, there may be analogs because it's hitting the fixed signs in the same way, in a similar way, in a similar way than the, than the present moment. But let's just check out some of the mundane events. Uh, back in 99, there was the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia and the controversies around whether NATO committed war crimes, NATO bombed Yugoslavia. It was the first time NATO had carried out an aerial campaign. There is then the Kosovo war that was happening around that time between Serbia and Kosovo and the ethnic Albanians that experience ethnic cleansing and atrocities in Kosovo. So there's all of that intensity around NATO and the Slavic world and the Balkans that emerged during a similar transit. The plane crash of JFK Jr. that happened in 1999. So we lost JFK Jr. during this period, during this time. The Columbine High School massacre happened during this period. And these are all events that happen while Mars is also in a fixed sign. I'm not gonna break down the charts individually, but just to say the Marshall trigger comes and these events then take place. And you can see we're dealing with some of the more intense, kind of darker Saturnine and Marshall events in, you know, of the moment of the, that were happening in the world during these previous activations. You also had the rise of uh, Vladimir Putin when you had the Battle of Grozny in Chechnya. There was terror attacks that happened in Russia and there's debates about you know, what was really happening, but basically the Grozny event that's been talked about so much this year after the nodes came into the fixed axis. The nature of the warfare may have some analogies to the present war in Ukraine. And then you come to 20, uh, late 2020, early 20, and then a lot of 2013, there was this Dhaka garment factory collapse in Bangladesh that killed many, many, like over a thousand people. You also had um, the uh, this meteor in Russia that was the, uh, one of the largest meteors in a hundred years came and it did some damage. Thankfully, it didn't kill many people. And so the main point, I think, though, is that there's some clear analogs just symbolically, energetically between that period, those two periods and now. But just think about your personal life too. What was going down? What's happening now that you can relate to? And it might help you feel relief about just that there's astrology happening. It's nothing personal. Um, or it might help you make different decisions if you think about resonant dynamics that are you're being presented with and how would you have decided those past events differently? How can you implement new choices now? And so that's the major point of the video is I just want you to one, think about the past history of this moment and then two, be aware that we're leading into an intensification of Mars triggering Saturn. Um, and these are the order of events. On July 28th, we're going to have a new moon in Leo. You can see this moon will now be squaring by sign. Mars, and it will be by sign opposite Saturn. The orb isn't as close, but it's building, right? On the 31st of July, Uranus will conjoin 
the North Node on the 1st of August. Mars will conjoin the North Node. Um, the 2nd of August, Mars will conjoin Uranus. These are all Central European dates. So you have a real pocket there, right, as July becomes August, where the Mars-Uranus North Node conjunction happens in a really tight orb with Saturn. And then you have on the 7th of August, Mars will square Saturn and perfect that square with Saturn. And then after that Mars-Saturn square on the 12th, we get maybe the most intense full moon, the most intense of all the syzygies that have come this summer and that will come is the uh, Aquarius full moon very close to Saturn opposite the Sun and squaring Mars, very close in orb, squaring Mars Uranus in the North Node. So that's the timeline. And then the 20th, Mars will leave Taurus and it kind of ends the fixed intensity in the martial trigger because Mars is now out of the fixed axis and we're now settling. Of course, eclipse season comes to eclipses in the fixed axis with Saturn still there. So we're quite actually not done with the fixed intensification, we're done with a local trigger, a local martial trigger. And that's one of the main things I wanna say about 2022. There's a huge amount of continuity between the first part of the year and then the rest of the year because of the nature of where the eclipses are happening and where Saturn is. It may be 2023 when the, at least symbolically with the astrology, where the big curtains are pulled down and new energy really comes in. So prepare for that continuity. And so just to close, to come back to Robert Handy, you know, think about the things in your life. What things are um, daily carried on in a predictable, reliable manner that have been under pressure in 2022, particularly that March pocket of like early to late March when Mars joined Saturn in Aquarius and then until early April. Has there been a return since 5 July of some of those themes when Mars re-entered Taurus? And one thing I'll just say is that with dynamic activation with malefic planets, there really are opportunities. Sometimes the things that feel the most painful in the moment or the experiences where there's tearing away or separation or blockage, we get a new birthing that takes place. And many astrologers tend to agree, I do too, that this is why the hard aspects, the synonym is dynamic, because the change is emergent. So this is a great period of change right now. Um, all of 2022, but this particular activated pocket of the fixed moment here, late July into the first half of August. So hang on. And if the changes are well underway and there's challenge and difficulty, just know it's going to end by the time we get into August and September. That particular martial activation is over. And then 2023, things move out of the fixed axis altogether in terms of Saturn leaving Aquarius, March 2023. The nodes leave the fixed axis in July, though the last eclipse in Taurus happens in October, I believe. And then Mars will spend a lot of time out of the fixed axis in 2023. So fixed signs, there's freedom coming, but hang on and ride out this dynamic period or enjoy it. Just throw that hat on like in Dr. Strangelove, he just gets that cowboy hat and he's riding that bomb, right? That part of the satire. Sometimes we just enjoy the intensity and the kind of pressurization.